How to beat the blues. How to beat the blues. I, I've just been thinking about Pop. You have? Yeah. Why? Why? Why, why, would, why would you think about him? Well, <laughs> because he just died. Yeah. Yeah. So those that don't know, our Pops just died, and we had an awesome... Um, celebration of life. The way it worked out was really kind of cool, right? We were able to. Well, do I did it. all the work, and you just did all the celebrating. We were able to do it about a month after you died, and so that allowed us to have a kind of a leisurely way of planning it. And when it finally came together, it was pretty fun. I mean, pretty, you know, pretty, pretty fun. Pretty. Well, I was amazed by the people that kind of came out a little bit, came out of the woodwork that wanted to participate. It went from what we thought was going to be four or five people in a. You know, in a shoebox. Shoebox, yeah, to 50 people at the fire station. I yeah. mean, you know, so, yeah. yeah. Those those that didn't get a chance to see it, I think both of us have it on our pages, uh, but we had a celebration of life, like a, what we call a flag ceremony in the fire service, where they did a, a bugler and a bagpiper, and they did, and it was a pretty concise all the deal. Uh, it, was, it was really cool. I mean, yeah. he had a lot of years of service, but he had been gone a long time, so I, uh, in hindsight, wasn't really thinking that they, anybody would really want to do it, right? He'd been gone so long, I and mean, that's kind of the tendency of all of us. Yeah, right? yeah, he'd been gone 20 years. 30, 32 30. years, yeah. Geez, well, 32 years was his service. Well, he, I think he retired. You think he was gone 30 years? He too? retired yeah, in 1990, maybe. buddy. Maybe, okay. 30 years, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, I did a little research and I looked up the five ways you can beat the blues. Yeah, yeah, because we, because this is one of those times where we're, where you're self-reflecting. You know, we're not getting any younger. Yeah. And our people yeah. around us and their parents are passing away. Right. And so it can be a little heavy-handed, heavy, -handed, heavy Well, and, right? and, and, and I don't know if you're the same as me, but I have a tendency. I'm not. I'm definitely not the same as you. <laughs> I, you. I have a tendency to isolate when I'm, when I'm feeling a little down, a little blue, a little depressed. Yeah. But that's exactly the kind of the, I mean, you do need some of that time, right? You do need to self-reflect and all that. But if that's really crowded in on you and making you feel worse, I think the first tip is we got to get those endorphins going. Right? Yeah. Which means getting out of the house. Maybe you're a gym guy or gym gal. You can go to the gym. Maybe you're a person who likes to get out and go for a walk. Yeah, yeah. Get on the treadmill. Ken likes to walk around the paseos here. The paseos. That's right. right. I, like, I like to get out of nature a little bit if I can. If you're a beach person, you can go to the beach and take a nice long walk along the beach. And maybe you like to swim and you have a local pool that you swim at or some people even swim in the ocean. You, yeah. Wherever you want. But I mean... A little bit of exercise, a little bit of movement. Uh, I guess I can think it gives you an appreciation for nature, but it also gets your your blood flowing and your endorphins. Yeah, going. there's a chemical reaction that you feel better after you've done a little bit of exercise, and I think the cardio is kind of key uh, in this particular sense. Uh, not so much the weightlifting. I think the cardio is kind of what gets your. Hey, going. I like eating me some weight. I like eating me some meat. And I like weight lifting weights. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what was the next one? Well, the next one was kind of meditating or uh, spending some, some time, um, what does it say, Ment improving your mental clarity, right? Yeah. It talks about meditating with mental clarity. And there's a few ways of doing that, right? You tell me about it. Well, you want, we actually just, have a, Just meditating. Well, we have yeah. a process. We have a process where we kind of go through a gratitude piece where you're just thinking That's about true. who are you That's grateful true. for, what are you That's grateful true. for in this moment. Like, and, think about yeah. it. Who around you are you super grateful for? And that's, that's, that's actually pretty cool. And I'm grateful when he stops talking so I can get a word in edge wise. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things you can do, you can start your day with gratitude. But I, how about if I want to end my day with gratitude? Well, you can do that too. But, but right. starting your day is good because it sets your tone for the rest of the day. And we know what you look for is what you get more of. So if you're looking for things to be grateful for, you'll see more things to be grateful for. If you're looking for things to complain about and feel bad about, you're gonna see more of that stuff. And I think surrounding yourself with people that are trying to do what you're doing on the same path. I think we've found that this is super powerful on our health journey, but in this mental clarity journey, it's helpful too. If you have somebody that's always negative, Nelly, yeah. that yeah. can be a bit of a downer, right? Sure. If everything's negative, sure. everything's negative, then yeah. you're gonna be negative. And the other, the, the third piece and the alternative to meditation is, is journaling or writing. So if you, if you haven't done any journaling, that's a really good way to express yourself. You don't have to share it with anybody. There's something magical that happens about you writing on a page, long form. Okay, it, I don't like to journal. I don't like to type. But which would you recommend? Do I start with a pen and paper? I think, yeah. Start? I think the pen and the paper is actually scientifically proven to be, have more connections to your brain neurons than typing. How about, how about, can I start with chat GPT? No, no, that's, 
that's that's <laughs> cheating. That's cheat GPT. Cheat GPT. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, I'd say I'd say just do some writing, and you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours. But it's definitely a very fulfilling and creative process that'll help you. You know, you can find all kinds of things too. In our case, we can write about uh, memories that we had of Dad and us right. with Dad, right. and memories that. Uh, of things that he gifted us, you know, talents that we have. What do you guys do out there? I mean, yeah. do you start with a format? Do you, do you do you think what are you ready for? And do you write from those things? That's or a really good kind place of a format. To start. Yeah, you just need something to get started. So writing is really important. What's okay. the th what's the that's the third one? What's the fourth one? Uh, reading, reading, reading something good. Okay, you're not not the yeah. not the uh, Fifty Shades. And you're of not gray. a reader either. Right? Fifty Shades of Grey. No, no, not, to read. not Fifty Shades of Grey. Ah. You're not a reader either, though. Well. Right? <laughs> I'm the smart one, he's the pretty one. Yeah. So and if you don't like reading, you can listen to books, right? But there's a lot of great books out there that are uh, both reflective in, so, in terms of self-improvement, but also just sort of uplifting. Well, that might be a way to, to work in your the, my lack of wanting to write, or maybe lack of having an idea of what to write about. But if I was reading something, I could reflect on that. Like yeah. I could, I could read a yeah. bit of something, and it doesn't have to be like self help, right? It could be anything. It could be just entertaining. It could be anything. I, I actually read a book not too long ago uh, that was talking about how to write a memoir, and she basically suggested that you break down your childhood into five year increments, and you write about the first five years of your life. Wow. And, and she had a list of questions that was cool, like, what do you remember? Uh, what do you remember smelling? What do you remember seeing? What do you remember tasting? Wow. You know, what are those kinds of things? And some of that stuff will jog out. And you do it, you don't do it all in one seat. I, I remember feeling the big wheel tires burn under <laughs> my right, going down the big hill, right? What do you right, remember? Right. Yeah, I remember dad spanking me on the bottom. <laughs> repeatedly. I remember seeing dad throw you down <laughs> from the big top bottom. <laughs> oh, that is actually really it's not cool. That I deserve I it. You, but you deserve it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think that's really cool, though, to be able to, because I know that in the past I've done some of these things chronologically in my head, and it really helps me. So his thought right there, and of course he's just thinking about it now, um, but like, which is nothing new for him. He kind of comes <laughs> up with stuff. But, but this five-year increment is kind of cool. Like the first five years, it is kind of a block of time. There's yeah. going to be some things you're going to remember about kindergarten, or maybe the times that are just before that, and then there's going to be a time that you're going to remember about grade school, sure, right? For and sure. then it would be like junior high, high school. Yeah, yeah, for sure, <laughs> so, for sure. Yeah, powerful, powerful stuff. So, and, and that was the last one was to uh, pamper yourself. Pamper yourself. That's right. <laughs> I know Ken likes a mani pedi. He says he really likes. How many out there like the calf massage? I've only comes from the I've only had a couple of mani pedis, in my life, but they are pretty. Let me see they, they are pretty luxurious. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they are pretty luxurious, and you know you got to slow down long enough to sit for an hour for someone to scrub on your hands and scrub on your feet and all that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. You could go to a massage place and get a massage, like a therapeutic massage, if you want to do that. That's true. Uh, right. I, I used to pay to go to the barber because I had this barber that would give me a scalp massage. Wow. That was awesome. awesome. You must have really like that. Was, that was worth the price of the cut. <laughs> All right. So what do you guys do out there? I mean, these are five ideas of things that we have tried and used and done, right? But, yeah. but I think we're interested in what everybody else is doing. Well, like, I think the main do? thing is to hit this head on, right? You want to beat the blues. You got to think of some ways that you can kind of work your way through it. You might have to replace the time that you were spending with somebody or around somebody with something else, like a replacement. Yeah, like that sure. could be that exercise time or some of those other things. Because if you're just going to sit and wallow in it, you're not actually going to pull yourself out. It could be a little overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. So hey, we're right there with you. We're learning as we go, and we're sharing what we learn. Uh, hopefully, this has been helpful for you. We're uh, we're remembering our pop today. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he, he, he what, when the closing comment is, he wanted them to be happy when he died because he knew where he was going and he wanted them to sing when the saints go marching in. Right. So we can finish with us singing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you finish. You, no. you, you sing. All, all, this. <laughs> all right. With that, I think we're going to see you, Brothers Bistro. Out. <laughs>